Hey everybody, it's Charlie. You guys asked me to do a Flash Batman button video, but this recent issue of Batman is a continuation of that, so I will address what happened during that story arc. Just careful for spoilers from the recent issues of Flash and Batman. So there's a new round of the Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video, but this week's Batman is probably one of the best deep dives into what's going on up in his head, the Bat Psyche. It's all about him addressing his fears and what his father said to him during the Flash crossover. So just to go back into the Flash button storyline, they got sucked into an alternate Flashpoint timeline that Flash believed had been canceled out when he went back and allowed his mother to die. In the grander sense of things, in the DC Rebirth universe right now, all of the comics are being influenced by Dr. Manhattan and the Watchmen. So as part of that, Bruce winds up talking to Thomas Wayne, his father, the Thomas Wayne who was Batman during Flashpoint, and his father tells him, don't be Batman anymore. Your mother and I didn't want this for you. Take the cowl off, start a family, be happy, and Batman flips out. Because his parents' death is what catalyzed him to become the bat in the first place. His whole life is based on that moment in Crime Alley. So in the way that Batman isn't a very emotional character, he gets extremely emotional. It's just that he keeps it all underneath. You sense it all going on behind his eyes. But there are a couple times that he starts openly weeping, and one of them was when he read the Flashpoint letter. You're one hell of a messenger. So he meets his father. His father says, don't be Batman anymore. And he spends the next couple of issues of his comic book just wrestling with that decision. What do I do now? Even when Alfred sees the bat signal go on and Bruce does nothing, he asks him, aren't you going to answer that? And it's implied that he's going to listen to his father and he will lay the mantle of the bat down. But then in this issue, they directly address that. Because Gotham Girl, if you're not familiar with her, she's just another character they introduced during Rebirth that has crazy powers and is trying to be a hero. Batman's trying to help guide her, but she doesn't know what she wants to do with her life. Do I be a hero? What am I supposed to do now? In much to his chagrin, Batman doesn't have any answers for her. Why are you asking me? Alfred didn't give me any answers when my parents died. So as he's trying to help her out, he starts talking about his own experience and trying to find out what he should be doing with his life what he decided to do after Crime Alley, the whole reason for him wearing the cowl. He says, what's normal? I'm not Batman because I like being Batman. I'm Batman because I'm Batman. He's been doing this for so long that it's just who he is. It's not a persona that he wears. It's not like other costumed heroes. Like he sort of makes light of people that dress up in costumes just to be heroes. Like I'm gonna be a hero, so I'm gonna put a costume on and go help people. He treats it like an extension of himself. It's part of me. It's who I am. I don't think I can stop, and I'm not happy, but I try to be. I try, and I fail. So those are some of the most important lines. There's the big Catwoman twist, and I'll get to that in a second. Obviously, that's the thing that most people are talking about. This whole idea that he's seen the truth of things, and he's afraid. Like he says, what I've seen, Gotham, him, if you're not scared, if all that doesn't scare me, then I'm insane, and I don't want to be insane. So I'm scared. So he just haunted by reality and he doesn't know exactly how to deal with it. So he's terrified and it's destroyed most of his relationships because even though he has Damien, he has all the Robins, he does have people that are close to him. He's never been comfortable not being Batman. He's Batman 24 seven. The Bruce Wayne that you see when he's schmaltzing around with women is just a mask that he wears. The other really important line in here, this would normally be an Alfred line of dialogue, but she says, I mean, getting scared, everybody's scared, but that just means that everybody gets an opportunity to fight that fear. We have a chance to be brave. And embracing that opportunity to be brave is what makes you a hero. Why do we fall? So that we can learn to pick ourselves up. So Batman... Being a hero, of course, they slide into this Catwoman scene where they're slowly montaging across the rooftops. And I love the shorthand that they have. Like, they just acknowledge each other. Bat? Cat? This is where we get into deep Easter eggs. So he references a diamond the first time they met. She was trying to steal a diamond on a boat. And she's like, oh, we met in the street. No, we met on the boat 
the diamond that you stole that I recovered, I bought it years ago and I've been keeping it this whole time because even then, that first moment we met, I knew. And even before you turn the page, you kind of know where this is headed. The diamond, diamond ring, engagement, I'm so afraid, will you marry me? So this is probably the bravest thing that Batman has done in a long time and he has fought dark side and parademons. So it just blew me away, probably one of the best issues of Batman that didn't involve any actual fighting in a long time. Crazy rebirth. This Batman story is the best thing to come out of rebirth. So any Batman story where you go inside his head is a lot of fun, but this does it in a really simple, very elegant way. The really cool Easter egg, if you're a longtime Batman fan, you probably know exactly what this is. So he's referencing the first time that they met. It's the first appearance of Selina Kyle in the comics. It was Batman number one in June 1940. So 67 years ago this month, that very first issue of Batman was published. Now remember, Detective Comics is where he debuted, but they didn't start publishing the Batman solo title till later. In that issue, there was a story called The Cat, which as you would expect, Selina Kyle debuted in. She tried to steal a diamond necklace disguised as an old woman on a boat. Batman foiled her plan. She jumps off the back of the boat as he's trying to haul her in and just jokes to himself, you know what, maybe I'll run into her sometime again. She had really nice eyes. Rereading it now, you just think to yourself, ah, oh, I see what you're doing there, Bill Finger, setting up the Catwoman to come back a billion times. But if you guys have read it, let me know what you think about it and where you think it's headed. So a lot of people are saying that Batman and Catwoman are getting married. And that's not what's happening. He asked her to marry him. That doesn't mean that she'll accept. And if she does, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will stick. Because if you've learned anything from weddings in the comics, weddings on Game of Thrones, it's usually bad when it's in a high fantasy situation like this with so much baggage that they're both bringing to this relationship. Part of the reason that it's never worked out between them is one, because of all the stuff that I talked about with Bruce, how he's been so afraid this whole time and it's poisoned all his relationships. I don't know how to not be Batman. Can Batman be married to Catwoman? Bruce Wayne can certainly be married to Catwoman, but Batman doesn't really have relationships like that. Even Talia, Damien's mother, was not a lasting relationship. Very steamy love affair, but she ended up being a very bad person, even if you've only watched the animated movies. Catwoman still comes off as more of a protagonist, so now I'm just so much more excited to see her in the DCEU so they can tease out that history between her and Ben Affleck's Batman. The next big arc that they're teasing at the end of this issue too, The War of Jokes and Riddles, I don't know that that's directly connected to this story because they've been doing this thing in Rebirth where they'll take a block of comics, they'll tell a really self-contained story, then they'll move on to another adventure, but sometimes they're not always continuous because you have tie-ins with things like the flash and the button, but they will probably reference this the next time you see him in a comic book with the flash. So just doing an amazing job, but if you want to read more about this, just read the flash button, then read this issue. You could also read the beginning of Batman Rebirth, because that deals with the Gotham Girl character, but you don't necessarily need to understand who she is to understand this story. But a lot of you have requested a longer flash Batman button video, so I'll probably do that later this week. There's a really cool Wonder Woman Superman Easter egg video that I'm going to post next. There's like a really drawn out Superman sequence that they did during the movie. So that'll post later tonight in a couple hours. But congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, Lone Wolf. Please private message me so I can get your contact details. There was a new round in this video. I'll just announce the winner when I post that Wonder Woman video tonight. While you wait for that, click here for new Flash. And you can click here for brand new Rick and Morty. Thank you so much for watching. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.